Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we are going to be talking about The Batman. It has been out for a while, but it just came out last week as of this recording on HBO Max. We are getting into spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen it, if you can spare three hours, go and watch it and like use the three hours of your life to see the movie. And but we are going to go ahead and just get right into this. So Cheryl, what did you think of The Batman? What is it with DC films and being kind of crazy long? <laughs> I right. mean, okay, I, there's a lot of things that I liked about it, and you know, a couple of things that I didn't like about it. Uh, but I do have to say, it was very long, and I kept thinking that, like, oh, it's almost over, they're gonna wrap it up. It reminded me a little bit of um, episode 10 of Star Wars, where it had, like, four endings right right um but honestly i thought it was gonna be like almost over about halfway through when they caught up with penguin and then <laughs> like that was only the halfway point and then i just like thing after thing i just it, it kept making me think that it was gonna end but it was definitely far from over <laughs> Yeah, so one of my criticisms, I have like three major criticisms, and like the runtime is one of them. When I first saw this movie, like I felt the runtime. Um, the second time, I didn't feel the runtime, but that's because I also watched half of it one night and another half the next day. So it wasn't as bad that way. It was a very good way to experience that movie. Um, but yeah, like I'm with you where there's a point where it just feels like it's going to end, and then it, it, it keeps going. Um, and that's not to say the stuff that happens afterwards isn't interesting, but it definitely feels like maybe about 20 minutes that that movie could have been lost. <laughs> but I'm, I don't know. Like, overall, I feel like, you know, the movie works, but there was a point when I did feel myself feeling like this was, this was feeling like a little bit too long for me. Yeah, and I think part of it kind of has to do with maybe the the genre of film as well because it's not necessarily like a traditional superhero movie it mm -hmm. seems to be a little bit closer to a neo-noir as opposed yeah. to an action film although you know the latter half of the film has a lot of um it's pretty cool action scenes um it's probably like the latter half pretty or like the last quarter of it is where like all the action is but um but there's a lot of cool stuff in there a uh, really cool scene especially with the penguin chase I, I really i think that was my favorite part is the penguin chase and the car like rolling over and it's a cool shot it's the there's upside cool down shot, shot of batman coming out of the batmobile with like a fire flaming background that was yeah. cool yeah there's a lot of really cool, like, um, compositions that they make in this movie. And, like, what speaks to that length that you were just mentioning is the fact that it's more of a detective film, which is part of the things that I really liked about it, because Batman is a detective. And I like the fact that at least with these newer Batman films, we've been getting different aspects of the character. Now I kind of just want to get a movie where we can kind of get a nice fusion of all of them. But, you know, because, like, with Ben Affleck in BVS, we got to see, like the martial arts prowess Batman that's really good at hand-to-hand -hand fighting and very capable in taking out people in like cool gadgets and stylistic ways, which is not something that uh, Christian Bale was able to do. He was basically just throwing haymakers. He didn't really have like a martial arts flair to his Batman's fighting style. So we got that with BVS and I thought that was really cool. And then, but with this Batman, we got the detective aspect of the character, and that's also really cool, especially seeing him working in tandem with, uh, with Gordon and with Alfred to kind of solve these mysteries that are coming up. And I think that the Riddler was like a great pick for this movie. So Riddler's my favorite personal Batman villain. And when I was a kid, like I used to love the Riddler and I'd have like Riddler like paraphernalia and everything else like that. Even Jim Carrey's Riddler, I was like okay with, but I, I did think he was a little too much of a buffoon. And I like the fact that this movie took Riddler and make and made him scary. Uh, the only issue, the next issue, one of my next biz, biggest criticisms that I had is just that I felt like the riddles were too easy. And that 
felt a little weird to me because yeah, I'm somebody that likes the Riddler and riddles, but most of the time when I've seen Riddler content, con um, content. I'm not always able to figure out the riddles that quickly. Or I might be able to figure out one, but there's a couple I'm just like, I have no idea. And basically all the riddles that he said in this movie, I knew the answer to. Like, immediately. And in many ways, Batman did too. So, that was a little lacking for me. I mean, they took a little bit to get the uh, the flying rat, or the rat with wings one. <laughs> yeah, although that one was a little... That one was based more on the mystery because like a rat with wings i would think was normally a bat but because they're saying that it's the guy is actually a rat it's a play on words and but his name is falcone which is also like a falcon just with an e on the end so that one i'm like eh but yeah they I mean they don't find that out till like near the end of the movie i thought penguin was a good candidate for that one so i, I mean too. it is very cobblepot so like you know, for him to be a rat, so. Yeah, and plus he's a major Batman villain, so it felt like he that would be that would be the way to go. So no, there was like some cool like little misdirections that they kind of built into there, which I liked. And yeah, I mean the mystery aspect of the movie just really carried it for me and made it feel like unique. Sorry, I lost you there for a second. No. <laughs> My earpiece just fell out, but. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what you just said, but I'm sure I agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just said I really like that the mystery. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel uh, like I was really getting the the noir vibes of it, and that's that's kind of what what I liked most about the movie um, mm -hmm. because it's different. It's a different kind of Batman film that we um, are getting because we you know prior to this everything has been very superhero like right um, and I think what was the last like Batman person to play like, that person actor um, to the play Batman in just a Batman movie was Christian, Christian Bale, Bale. Yeah. Um, so this is a very different kind of Batman that I that I enjoy, and I don't know if you've seen, like, the animation on HBO uh, about, like, the holiday killer or something like that. The Long, that, the long Halloween. The Long ha which Halloween. I've, so I've read the comic, and I've watched at least part one of The Long Halloween. I haven't seen how they've done the part two part of it. It's really good. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should check that out. Um, but uh, it, it felt a lot like that, and, mm -hmm. and I... The first murder, even, it. is on Halloween. Yeah, and so I actually thought I actually thought that maybe it might have been um, the ho long holiday, uh, ho long Halloween again. Like I thought that, like, oh, that's what they're gonna do is they're gonna make a movie out of that, which would have been cool because um, then you get to see like all the villains and everything. Um, Cheryl, but, Cheryl, yes. Cheryl, yes. I <laughs> am surprised. I thought I was gonna bring, be the one to bring up the long Halloween reference, but you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo, I, I am actually a bit, I feel like a proud parent right now that <laughs> you referenced the long Halloween before me. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. You, you're you such an amazing human being. I'm so glad we're never partners. I think it's because I, I, I live with a boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but... <laughs> no, you're right. The long Halloween is a great um, reference. And I felt the same way since it started off with the Halloween murder. Um, and I thought they were just going to adapt the Riddler and have him kind of play like what Calendar Man was. Um, but obviously that's not how they go. The movie takes place within the course of a week as opposed to the course of the year with different murders happening on different holidays. So they didn't, they didn't actually go that way. But if like talking about it, it feels like a nice little story to still do because it's still like a mystery and deals around like Gordon and Harvey Dent and Batman working together. Yeah, and yeah, it's great. I think, I really think that I, I felt the vibe. Like, if you put the two of them next together, I could 100% see um, Robert Pattinson doing this again. But, uh, you know, maybe with the, the long Halloween storyline. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be, like, really uh, as, as good as this one, I think. Like, it would be cool. Because um, it doesn't have to have, like, uh, what do you call it? Like a like an overall arc. 
where they're all connected because that's mm. how comics are right, right. they just you can just have like one offs here and there and it's still part of the universe so i mm. i can see that happening and i think that would be very cool but um i guess like one of the things that i really like like really really like about the whole you know pi batman thing is they really make him out as uh more down to earth and yeah. like and one of the things that i think that was um brilliant was uh that they put hit, like when he's not wearing the batman suit he's like just taking it off he has like all the eye makeup smeared around his eyes which makes sense because you know we know george clooney had the <laughs> makeup around his eyes right. and everything but he takes out the takes off the mask there's nothing there. So I, th- I, th- I thought that was a cool aspect. Like, if there's a lot of realism here, it's almost if um, there's... Almost if uh, there's nothing that any of the characters did that a regular human can't do. Like, physically. Like, there's nothing physically um, spectacular about it. Like, even the, the hand-to-hand combat at the beginning when he's just beating up those thugs. Yeah. Um, he's just standing there on the floor, like punching it out with them, and that's I could totally see that Batman being like a realistic dude. Yeah, no, like the it's very it does feel very grounded, and I it goes to another thing that's I think that the movie did very well, where it doesn't start with the year one of Batman, but it's year two. So he's been Batman for a while. The city's familiar with him, and it gives like two things that the the story can now do. One, since he's established, you can have this really cool opening scene where you have all these criminals in different places that do these crimes, but then are afraid to go down back alleys because they they are afraid that he might be there. And like that whole like that whole sequence of making Batman to be this like boogeyman that could be anywhere, even though he's just one man, it's like it's very cool that they they play into that fear. And so I really like that um, that part about it. And then you can also show Batman still like doing things for the first time or making mistakes. Cause like, I'm not sh- like the story doesn't explicitly say it, but I get the feeling that in this movie is the first time Batman ever jumped off of a building. Because when he gets to the top of that police station and he gets to the edge, he, he like has to take a breath. Like, oh, 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 oh we're about to do this. Um, and then even he like, you know, botches the landing. So I was like, okay, so he he hasn't jumped off buildings too much in this world. So this is this is kind of cool to see that this is him doing it for the first time. Yeah, and even at the end, you know, when he jumps off the the scaffolding to mm-hmm. grab onto that uh, live wire and then cut it off, he like takes a deep breath before he does it because he's like, well, "Here we go. I'm about to fall and this is going to hurt." <laughs> this is going to hurt. <laughs> but we got to do it because yeah. we're we're Batman. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, okay, so let's, I, I know, I, or at least I have a feeling that you have, um, really strong feelings about the score, so <laughs> I would like to hear what you have to say first. <laughs> what do you, you think I have strong feelings? <laughs> I'm gonna keep bringing it up. I was like, oh, I love, I was like, I like the score, the two songs that they play over and over again. I think that they're great. It's just unfortunate <laughs> that they don't have more songs. <laughs> and so my friend pointed out to me that it's not like two songs. They kind of have like three, really. But, you know, like, and one of the songs is just, uh, and like some of the songs are just remix versions of the the regular dun, 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 like that whole theme. There's like remixes to that. They have that like that the remix to their, that Nirvana song. And like, there's like one other one, but Ave Maria. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I found, I found the score to be very lacking for me. I like the tracks that I heard, but it didn't feel like it stood out to me more than like it. Like, I mean, it's Hans Zimmer, so what can you say? But it doesn't stand out to me like a Hans Zimmer score in like the original Dark Knight trilogy from Nolan. You know, so. Wait, 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 is I, it, is it, I don't think it's Hans Zimmer. I remember looking it up and, uh... No, for, so for the Nolan's trilogy. Oh, okay, I was like, it's, that was not Hans Zimmer. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. So Nolan's trilogy of films had Hans Zimmer, and yeah. those, those movies had a score that, you know, was very strong and varied um, throughout all of those movies. But if you're just talking about, like, one-to-one, even just one movie had a couple of different tracks that stood out. 
Um, so while I did like the songs, the, like the score that I heard in this film, I noticed the repetition. And it started to feel like when I was watching the movie that they didn't really have anything else to go on. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I mean, I, I was under the impression that you liked it because you kept humming it today. <laughs> um, it's just a fun thing to hum. <laughs> So my problem with it is, while I think it's cool, I think the reason why it would be something that people would like is because it's very, very similar to the Imperial March Mm. from Star Wars. And he is not Darth Vader, but they gave him Darth Vader-like music. (laughs) And it just sounds so close to it. It's it's almost like it's the same exact song, but they like took just out every out other it. note. <laughs> no, 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 they took out every other note. Right. And so instead of like bum bum bum, it's bum. bum. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. I, I was just <laughs> outraged. I was like, man, be a little bit more original. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, for that, I, I wish that they just, you know, tried to come up with something else. Mm-hmm. It's just too close. Like, I, I get being inspired by other people. And um, I know, like, things have been borrowed and... Um, you know, changed a little bit, but, like, make it your own, right? I didn't feel that. I did not feel like it was made um, different enough uh, for, Mm -hmm. especially since, like, you know, when when I listen to the score in other parts of the film, I feel like, oh, this sounds kind of like Lord of the Rings. This sounds a little bit like Narnia. And so I was just, I was just very, like, did they just use temp tracks and decide oh, to wow. keep it? That's how I felt. I see. Yeah. I hopefully I'm hoping that in the next movie they expand a little bit more. But I was joking with uh, friends where I was literally like, I have no idea what this soundtrack like. What songs are on this soundtrack? Because in the chat they said that it's like there are like five songs, but usually soundtracks have like what twenty themes, twenty songs on them, like at least. And I'm like, I can't even, I can't imagine this, like the score that you buy for this movie having any more than like seven tracks. For and a, it's a, a three, three hour, hour movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we just hear the same thing over and over again. They even <laughs> use Ave Maria twice. And, yeah. that, other, and that other song. Um, the Nirvana I, song. Yeah, the Nirvana they, song. They, they use that twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. So I, that was another one of my big criticisms. But to talk about some of the other things that I do like, um, even though, so this actually is another criticism, is that's that like uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same person in this movie. There's no like differentiating between who the character is. Um, I absolutely do see that. One thing that I will give the movie, movie credit for, though, is that it allows for Batman and Bruce to have some kind of an arc as separate characters where at like so when i first start watching the movie and i'm seeing how bruce is talking and treating alfred it pisses it pissed me off but the fact that they they did it for a reason because they wanted to give that relationship a place to go and then even in that moment when alfred wakes up in the hospital bed and he looks over at bruce he's smiling to see he's happy to see bruce there and the first thing bruce says is you lied to me And so then it gives like this awesome moment for Andy Serkis to really act, which he doesn't get to do that too much in this movie, unfortunately, but in this scene he does, where he gets to talk to him and say, hey, look, you know, you lost your parents, but I lost my friends and I was supposed to protect them. You were just a boy and you needed a father and all you had was me. And it's just like, you know, you get Alfred's like struggle there. He didn't know how to raise a kid. He and he got stuck with this kid and he didn't even know how to help him which also mirrors kind of how Bruce wants to help this other kid who's lost his parent and he doesn't know how to reach out to that kid to do the same. So him and Alfred are very similar in this way. So I really like the fact that they allowed that relationship to have that development and for Bruce to realize that you mean something to me. And then as far as Batman goes, like his whole thing is he's supposed to inspire fear and he inspires criminals to up their game in this movie 
when he starts off the movie by saying, I'm vengeance, and the, one of the last things he hears from the criminal is that line repeated back at him, it shows him, oh, I've actually been inspiring the wrong group of people, and I need to be something more. I need to be a, a symbol of hope. And so Batman, the character, the entity, also has a type of arc. Even if it's like the bare minimum, I at least appreciated that it was there in the first place. Yeah. And I do feel like I agree that uh, that there was just not all, enough of Andy Serkis. Mm-mm. But strangely, was, like, you know, just thinking on that, I realized that I, I kind of felt the same way about all the other characters. I didn't get enough uh, Cobblepot. I didn't get enough Falcone. And then um, we got a lot of Catwoman. But, yeah, a lot of Catwoman in this movie. Uh, which I appreciate, but at the same time, I feel like there wasn't enough um, chemistry and there wasn't enough uh, of a purpose for her to be there. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I know that they like made her the daughter. I mean, she's the daughter of Falcone and everything, and so she had... Um, you know, that kind of purpose, but I feel like her agenda didn't really, um, give enough conflict to the story. Like, there was, there was no, I think it would have been more interesting, because, um, Selena and Bruce have always had a push and a pull. Yeah. And, like, every other Batman thing that Mm -hmm. I have seen. And I feel like there, that was lacking. And that's probably why there wasn't enough chemistry. Like, they had just met in this movie. And, like, she was kind of, like, giving him a hard time. But not quite enough of a hard time. Because she was still going along with everything that he was kind of telling her to do. So that I felt like there was a, enough pushback from her. Until, like, the very end when she goes off and tries to kill Falcone. Um and, like right. that's that's when I thought like this is the best interaction that I'm getting between them. But like for the entire rest of the movie, I was like she's just kind of going along with it, and I'm not getting any conflict between them. So I right, think so you want to see a little, a little bit more conflict thing. between the two of them? Yeah, there just wasn't enough push and pull, and I think that's why I feel there was not enough chemistry there um that would warrant a romance. <laughs> I feel so. I guess I feel like. I could see more of the chemistry from her side of things, but not so much from Batman's side of things. Because I think while Robert Pattinson's a good actor, I don't think that he has much to play in this movie outside of brooding. Um, And he doesn't really show much in the way of vulnerability either. So, like, I feel that, I mean, I think, like, he might have, like, a moment or two, but for the most part, he's kind of the same note for the whole film. And because of that, when you have these moments of, you know, Selena kind of, you know, really showing vulnerability to him and showing who she is, he's kind of still the same. And so I think I can feel like some emotion and feelings for him for whatever reason, whether it's because of the fact that he's helping her and he sees her or whatever, I can feel more coming from her than I can feel of why does he actually like her outside of just physical attraction? Like, what is it about her that is really drawing him to her. I never get that, I never get a sense of what that really is from his perspective, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, there's not really a lot of flirting there. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's just, I mean, we've, we've seen, like, shots of her, like, kind of looking at him differently, and then there was that whole thing where, you know, it looked like he was about to kiss her, but he didn't, and we all know she was expecting it because we could see it right. in in her um, reaction that she was thinking that they were about to kiss, but they didn't. So I was like, okay, <laughs> this yeah. is not working. I mean, for me. And there's an argument to be said that that's just who Batman is. That's like how the character it, like behaves. But you know, I do understand still that the argument still stands that the, there did feel like there was a lack of chemistry, regardless. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, he's um, he's a brooding guy. He's definitely yeah. like, you know, one emotion all the time kind of thing. 
but I have seen plenty of times where he was kind of flustered and I wish, you know, there was something like that where she would do something like and catch that him off guard. Kind of, exactly, but there was none of that. Like she never really took him off guard, like caught him off guard and I think if there was a little bit more of that, I think that it would have improved the chemistry between them. Yeah. No, I think that that's a really good point. Um yeah, one of the other things that I wanted to bring up, I guess like there's, I guess there's a few more things, but we don't have to go through all of them. Um, I liked that they didn't give an answer to what happened to Bruce's parents. I liked that every time he felt like he got an answer, there was another version of the events that could have been the truth. And at the end of the day, even Alfred said it could have been just some random thug on the street. He just he doesn't know, but he searched his entire life or ever since that happened. And so when Falcone is killed and there's no like big revelation of what the truth actually was, it basically says that, you know, Bruce will never know what really happened to his parents. And it's tragic, but I kind but I kind of like that element of the story. I think that, that I'm I'm glad they decided to do that. Yeah, and I'm really glad that they decided not to have a flashback to it. <laughs> <laughs> and they left it out of the movie and only touched on it verbally. Although I feel like they didn't need to. Yeah. No. It doesn't I mean, have to be in every movie. Well, I mean, it's 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 kind of tied to who Batman is, so you can't really have Batman without referencing like his parents. That that's the reason he does what he does. Because also the whole thing about that that ties to his relationship with the the sidekicks too. Which goes into kind of what I want to see in future Batman movies, because with this with this kid, if you had said that this kid was going to be like the next Robin, or like if he was like Tim Drake or something, I'd believe you, because he has this whole connection with this kid where he wants to help him but doesn't know how to, and that's like kind of like the thing about Batman, right? When Dick Grayson's parents are killed by Tony Zuko, um, he's trying to lead Dick Grayson down a different path. He's trying to help him because he knows what that was like for him. And through doing that, he kind of pushes Dick away. But then, you know, you have Jason Todd, who takes Batman's violence and willingness for justice and, like, turns it up to the extreme and takes it too far. And then you have Tim Drake, who his purpose as a Robin is you need a Robin in order to hold you back, Batman, because without a Robin, you go too far. So, like, all of these different characters can play a role into, like, the overall story and in connecting fiber with who Batman is and his, and him as a character. So I would love to see that being explored because the other thing about these movies is that while this movie I like, it's not too different from like Nolan's films. It's it's very similar. I mean, you know, in tone and and the, like the subject matter, like it's the city and the city is being attacked and there's a terrorist attack, like Dark Knight Rises with Bane and the football field and sealing off the city and this one it's Riddler and flooding the city, which is like, yeah, it's a great plan, but where it's kind of similar. But these movies lately have been so afraid to kind of tackle these other storylines re revolving around the sidekicks. And I, for me personally, I would like to see them at least try in one of these future films because they, they haven't in over 10 years. Yeah, I'm I'm actually glad that they brought back so or like you know that they had so many villains because it's been yeah. a while since we've gotten to see these villains. Um, we're talking like back to the uh, not the Clooney ones, the one before. Um, where are you talking about Danny, Batman Forever? Uh, Danny DeVito. Oh, Clint Batman Penguin. Returns. Catwoman. That was oh yeah, that was the last yeah Batman Returns had Catwoman and Penguin in there. Yeah, so it's nice to see that, and I think we didn't really get a lot of Falcone before either, and, you know, uh, I, by the way, love the way they did the casting for this movie. Um, oh my gosh, casting is... Mm. I know, we got John Turturro, um, Zoe Kravitz, awesome, she was amazing in this movie. Um, Colin Farrell? Colin I know, Farrell? I didn't even know it was him. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, lots of good casting in this movie. So, um, and Robert Pattinson actually did surprisingly well. Um, although it I mean, didn't really give act. him. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are like making fun of him because it's he's just like Edward Cullen <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> 
but he he was he fit he fits like he can do Batman like yeah, yeah. I know it's like Batman only has one emotion but he can do it <laughs> I mean but it's also great because he went from playing you know a vampire bat to a man dressed as a as a oh, vampire bat good grief <laughs> Is this show over yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, um, there's one, when I see that scene where, and that's the other thing about this movie, it's surprisingly funny. Like, there's some funny moments. And when you're watching that scene with Penguin Gordon and Batman kind of talking about El Rata, Alada, um, and, <laughs> and Penguin saying, you guys don't know the difference between L and La? And that's when they find out that it says U-R-L. But I, watching that scene, I was like, wow. This is Colin Farrell, Jeffrey Wright, and Robert Pattinson all acting across from each other. Like, what is happening in this movie? And like you said, Zoe Kravitz, um, Andy Serkis. I'm like, this is, the casting is so on point in this movie. And it does have me excited to see where they go in the future. But that leads me to my final big criticism of this movie. I did not, personally, I did not need a Joker like tease again at the end of this movie, like they did at bat at the end of Batman Begins. Like I am so over the Joker, and I get it. Like people love the Joker, but I am so ready to explore other villains. Batman's Rose Gallery is huge. There's so many other cool, interesting villains that would also fit in this world, like Calendar Man, for instance, that I would just love to see portrayed on screen. I don't need the Joker right away. It's it's played out to me. So when that happened in the movie, I just kind of rolled my eyes. And that kind of like took me out of the movie for a moment. Yeah, it's funny that um, you brought that up because I actually wrote that down as well. Um, so I found out that it wasn't intentionally there to be a tease. There was actually a deleted scene um, with the Joker... Uh, where Batman was actually talking to him in Arkham. Right. Um, so uh, he, I guess, like, the director felt he needed that scene to give closure for the Riddler. Right. Um, and that's the only reason why he was there, although it did make it seem like there's going to be, you know, another movie to come because he's saying, you know, like, uh, something about like second chances or something everybody loves like a comeback story a comeback yeah um but that was not intentionally meant to imply that there's going to be another movie so mm. and it's it's weird because he's only in that one scene but there was another scene where he just had a conversation with batman i, just, I don't know anything more than that but um yeah <laughs> hmm. that's all i know <laughs> Okay. But, I mean, yeah, we're running up on time here, but, like, um, overall, that's those are kind of, like, my biggest feelings um, about the movie. Like, did you have any other big lingering, like, things you wanted to get off your chest? Um, I did, but I think that is more something for our after-show talk, so I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. And if you guys want to hear more of us talking about this or other things, you can check out, check out our Twitch channel on twitch.tv slash c3films. And yeah, and you can just like, you know, check us out on Facebook and while you're down there, you know, give us a like, share, subscribe. This is what we do. We love this and we love being able to do this with you guys. So yeah, come check us out more in the future. We're back now. We were gone for a while, but we're going to be keep doing this and uh, we'll be around. We did a hundred episodes and hopefully we'll do a hundred episodes more. So what did you guys think about the Batman? Did you like it? Did you think it was too long? Did you enjoy the casting? Did some of the things that bother that bothered us bother you whatever you thought about it comment below let us know and as always if you could give us a like share and subscribe even if you don't though i have been chris and this has been cheryl and we'll see you all next time